Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Bring It Back. This being a show where I talk about TV shows that were canceled and or short-lived that I'd like to see get brought back in some shape or form. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the Showtime series, Let the Right One In. Uh, really quickly, if you're unfamiliar with what this series is, this particular story is about a father named Mark. He's taking care of his daughter, Eleanor, who's like, I believe 12, who was turned into a vampire 10 years prior. And basically, Mark and her have been traveling all across the world, moving from place to place, as he's been trying to track down the creature that bit her, hoping to try and find a way to derive a cure from it and cure his daughter once and for all. And after 10 years of moving around, they finally moved back home to New York as Mark is trying to follow every lead, trying to kind of settle down back with, like, you know, his best friend, Zeke, who's kind of like a brother to him, and trying to give... Eleanor kind of some semblance of a normal life and her uh, meeting Isaiah and his mom who's a cop uh, Naomi and obviously the story also does this interesting thing where there's also a parallel story happening at the same time where you have a, a scientist her name is Claire she learns from her father who's been keeping it a secret that her brother Peter has been a vampire for the past 10 years and they're working on a cure so it's these parallel stories of people kind of basically going about things from two different perspectives claire going leaning more to science route of trying to construct the cure on her own whereas uh mark is trying to track down the creature to find a cure in that regard so it's an interesting story and as it's such an interesting parallels i don't want to get into too much because uh, i don't want to spoil things but uh, it's it's such a great like nice like supernatural horror series that is it's beautiful, but it can be also be bloody uh, with uh, obviously a lot of uh, the stuff that it handles. But um, it's a very compelling story. Um, Let the Right One In is in, in this very unique position because if you're unaware, Let the Right One In is based off a Swedish book, a Swedish novel of the same name. That novel has been adapted into other movies. There was a 2008 Swedish, Swedish movie. There was a 2010 American uh, version of the movie just called Let Me In. And so this show is not in a direct, like the show is actually, because I think the movies are closer adaptations to the book than the show is. The show shows, shares some of those similar elements with the book and I think the movies, but it kind of ended up going its own route. And I think that's what made it such a unique story. And I think it's such a bummer because it is such a ridiculously good show, but I think sadly just no one watched, not enough people watched it, which is such a bummer because it's a really, really good show. Cause like, like, cause it, that's why I was also the reason why I also bring that up is because that it's different than the books. Cause I, at least on some level, I would always prefer like a show being able to continue on and stuff like that. But maybe you think like, right, because it is based on a book. You read the book, at least you there's some form of that full story out there. Which technically yes, but this version of the story, there is no full version. Now I've talked about it without spoiling it. I think there's certain elements of this story that you could still end up in the same result as kind of like the original story. Sure, but this story was taken it's like taking different direction it like like i said it shared a lot of similar backbone but a lot of like the details and the meats and potatoes of the actual story are quite different and to see where this story would have ended up later down the road uh, that's what's kind of the real bummer about it this show's also in this complicated position because apparently like because of the whole paramount plus of it all showtime is kind of getting folded into that and so a lot of stuff ended up getting canceled and not just canceled i believe i was reading an article that was referencing a uh, Hollywood Reporter article where they were basically saying it's actually been removed from the service completely along with other shows because of its tax write-off stuff. So you can't even watch this show currently on Showtime. I don't know if there's somewhere you could buy it digitally or whatever. Once again, that's a whole digital versus physical conversation um, that has to be had. But um, there is a silver lining to this. It has put the sh all those shows, this one in particular, in a position where they can be shopped around. And based on the article I was reading, uh, it is currently being shopped around to see if anyone else will pick it up. And I hope someone does, because I'd love to see where the show would go. I don't know, I mean, what, what would happen next? Um, uh, I mean, there's a multitude of places. I don't know if Hulu would be really interested in it. Um... I don't know, like, obviously, like, a Netflix Prime Video or Hulu feel like maybe the right spots for it. I'd probably go more Prime Video or Netflix, but, you know, I, I don't care. Somebody pick this show up, 
hopefully someone on like a streaming service that I currently have, or at least someone in my family or someone I know has access to. But I'm like, I just, I want that series to continue because it's just ridiculously good. If you've not seen it, I highly recommend you check it out. I know you have like reservations probably at this point because it was canceled. You're like, well, what's the point of me watching? It's just a really, really good story. And it's not like, oh, it ended conclusively. Like there's some elements tied up, but there's still a lot of loose ends. I mean, the season ends, spoilers, on a cliffhanger. I won't go into specifics, but it definitely ends on a cliffhanger. And what that would have meant, um, the repercussions of this season finale, it would have been wild to see what that meant for season two. This is a series I would want it to go on for however long it takes to tell the story that they want to tell. Now, they could tell it in two. Sure, I don't think they would, but maybe they could. I feel like this could be like a season, like a three season thing. I don't expect the show to be like, oh, we're going to run for seven seasons. It feels like a story that probably would have a finite amount of seasons. So I could see it being like, maybe, if, once again, they could do it, maybe two seasons, but I feel like at the very least, maybe three seasons. But at the end of the day, however long it takes them to tell the full scope of the story that they want to tell, I'm fine with that. So I just, like I said, fingers crossed, hoping that the show gets another um, chance. Cause like I said, it is just ridiculously, ridiculously good. And, um, I should also note it's Tuesday, uh, January 31st at the time you're recording this. I think the news dropped yesterday about the, at least the Latin right one ends cancellation, maybe some other stuff too. But so it, this probably won't be going up until Monday, which will be the 6th, I think, February 6th. So it, it'll be a little like a week or whatever, almost. So a lot of stuff could change in between now and then. So do keep that in mind whenever you're coming across this video. If, like any information I'm saying is inaccurate at the time, you know, because it wasn't inaccurate at the time you recorded this. But yeah, that's just kind of my, my thought process. Uh, that's where I'm at with all of this. So. But really, that's all I wanted to talk about. So the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, love life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and good bye.